This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Hello, this is the Horror Fried Podcast. That's Michael Combs. We have the concert going king over oh. here, Mike Martin. Um, and there's Mr. Keith Clanton over mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Careful what you say. What? <laughs> Um, we're also joined by our very good friend Michelle, our favorite Aussie. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I missed you guys. How's it going? It's going good. It's been so long since I've seen you all. It has been yes. a long time. It's been a long time. The last time we recorded together was Horrified Hotties. Oh my god, Horrified Hotties. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That yeah, this is this is like your first like real episode with us, right? I know, I'm nervous. Oh, nervous girl I ain't nothing to be nervous about <laughs> nothing to be nervous about <laughs> nothing um so we are back with episode 10 of our queer horror series um just as a reminder we would love for y'all to follow along with us so please be sure to give this season's movie listing a peep over at the horrified podcast on instagram now today's movie not necessarily a horror movie. I wouldn't even really consider it a suspense thriller movie, more of a dark comedy, but in the wheelhouse of horror. Mm-hmm. Would we agree? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of horror royalty in it. It does have a lot of horror royalty in it. Mm-hmm. That was hard to say. It was <laughs> really hard <laughs> to say. Um, now, come sit a spell. Let's chat about... Jawbreaker. But first, you need to know something about them. The beautiful ones. The flawless four. Everyone wanted to be them. You know them. They went to your school, too. They totally ruled. The one in the green? That's Keith. He was the leader. (laughs) He was like Satan in heels. The blonde slash brunette. Mike Martin, a legend in his own little mind, known to himself as Foxy. The one with the pigtails, that's Michelle, popular because of that face. And because she was best friends with the one in the Jurassic Park t-shirt, that's Michael. He was special. Everybody loved Michael. Not just because he was beautiful and popular and rich and smart. He was all of those things, but more than anything, he was sweet. Keith ruled with terror, but Michael, he ruled with kindness. He was like the Princess Die of Reagan High, and that pissed Keith off. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was just, well, he was perfect. At a school like Reagan High, popularity can be deadly. I heard she choked on a jawbreaker. That is so cool. I don't think we've met what with the cruel politics of high school and all. From TriStar Pictures comes the battle of the babes. It's hard. It's over, Courtney. I am petrified. Jawbreaker. Our best friend is dead. Do you have any idea what that means? You were shooing for prom queen? Rated R. Man, what an <laughs> intro. Bravo. That was good. That was good. Thanks. That couldn't be more accurate. All right. Well, Keith's done for the episode. So. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> written and directed by Darren Stein, Jawbreaker was released in 1999, starring Rose McGowan, Rebecca Gayhart, Julie Benz, and Judy Greer. But we've got a lot of cameos in this movie and a lot of really great supporting actors, some of which I'm probably going to leave some out. But we've got Carol Kane, Pam Greer, Jeff Conway, William Catt, PJ Souls, Marilyn Manson even has a little cameo, Tatiana Ali. I mean, there's what a up, lot. What up, Ashley of, Banks? There's a lot <laughs> of people in this movie. Um, Michael. Hello. Kick us off. So on her 17th birthday, Liz Purr is kidnapped by a group of three people in masks. She is tied up and gagged with a jawbreaker and thrown in the trunk of a car. It is revealed that the kidnappers are her best friends, Courtney, Julie, and Marcy. When they get to their first stop, they open the trunk and Liz has choked on the jawbreaker and died. The three frantically try to figure out what to do and head to school. Courtney calls the school pretending to be Liz's mom and calls her out sick for the day. 
They leave Liz in the trunk and Courtney comes up with a plan to make it look like Liz was raped and killed. Fern Mayo is asked to bring Liz her school assignments and walks in on the three discussing the death of Liz, death of Liz and what their next steps are. First, let me just say, um, the movie, as soon as it comes, like as soon as it comes on the camera and you see them walking down the hallway and they give the, int- you know, Judy Greer's little monologue, mm-hmm. gives the intros, it's the perfect introduction for mm-hmm. me. And it's very clearly... 1999 a hundred percent oh yeah aside aside from the outfits and all that i even was like what about like all these like transitions from scene to scene that are just little swipes and like all those like weird noises and yeah (laughs) the tongue noises yes Yes. (laughs) it's very 1999 and once you are introduced to the characters and you see the title credits it's in a jawbreaker factory, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I'm assuming mm-hmm. is a real jawbreaker factory. No, I mean, how it else would they? It have? looks like it. Yeah, it's not. No, I was listening to the commentary. They had to. They wouldn't let anyone film at the real factory, so they created it. That's why it looks sort of like creepy Edward Scissorhands kind of. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, Do you want to eat a jawbreaker from that factory? Like it looks like not the best. <laughs> well, I don't guess I would really know what a real jawbreaker factory looks like. Very no, true. <laughs> Okay, well, that was really smart then, because I love, it's very, I mean, this is like a little off topic, but what it reminds me of, and this movie came out years later, but it reminds me of um, the intro to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yeah. Well, even Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but I just think of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's obviously very like CGI and whatever, but it, that's, I don't know, just reminded me of that in the Candy Factory. Um, so I do I love, love the that. I do love the way they like show the little spritz of the colors on the yes. mm-hmm. the jawbreakers. I like yes. that, and I also love the little candids that it shows because you've already been introduced to the characters at this point. You know that they've killed their friend on accident, using air quotes there, um, and they slide in those little Polaroids and candid photos, which were also all taken on the first day of filming. Were they? Oh, were they? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Interesting. But I, I just, I really like the opening credits. Because anytime movies do that stuff where they show like Polaroids of like the actors from the movie, I'm always like, I mean, did they just like Photoshop a bunch of like pictures of them together and somehow just make it look like it was a picture of all of them actually together? But this, they actually took a bunch. But this, they actually did. They just took them like their first day of film and they were all just like hanging out and going to eat and whatever. And they took some photos. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I actually have one of those photos signed by Rose. Mm. The last time we went to Monster Radio, that's what I had signed. She had a black and white photo mm. of the four of them. So with Liz. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one of those photos that you've seen. It actually might be the one in the birthday card, but it's a black and white photo. That's what I picked for her to sign. But that's neither here nor there. I feel like this is one of the... I mean, we're getting really off topic already, but... <laughs> I feel like this is one of the movies that Rose talks pretty highly of out of some of her. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she kind of like shades some, but I think she genuinely likes Jawbreaker. Jo- which... I would say Jawbreaker and Scream are probably the two she mm-hmm. thinks more highly yeah. of. Yeah. Which, I mean, after reading her book, I don't really blame her. Right. <laughs> right. So. so what did you think about um, the whole like kidnapping scene? What do we think? Normal. Normal. Normal, yeah. <laughs> that happened to you on your birthday? Well, at one point they make a Julie makes a comment to Zach and she says, You know how girlfriends will like kidnap Can, each other on their birthday? Michelle, did they birthday. did that ever happen to you? Nor does that happen to anyone? No. no. It's weird. Yeah. Well, so because I guess Darren Stein actually has said that this is like based on like stuff that his friends did. Like this was legit. And they would kidnap their... And he thought it would be funny to just put a twist on it for the movie's sake. You know, what if, like, that kind of situation just went wrong? Yeah. And... I mean, maybe they did do that. They make reference of it in the movie that this is not the first time that they've done this. Right. On their birthday. It's like, this is something they It happened a year prior. Yeah, they talked about it. So, obviously, like, this is something... Yeah, but I'd never heard of that before. We don't do stuff like that in the South. You get shot. We don't do that. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
Although it'd probably be pretty easy considering half the people leave their doors unlocked. Uh, yeah. Well. Not me, though, so don't try. No, me so. either. <laughs> You're not getting into my house. Don't try. So what do you think about their reactions to Liz's death? Uh, well, I think they're normal at first. But Rose obviously has no empathy or well, anything. I'm sorry. What's her? Courtney. 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 Well, Courtney, to me, the only time you ever see, oh, like an oh shit, is after she takes the picture and then she has the camera and she has this look on her face like, oh my God. But to like, obviously, once you watch the movie, and I think it's pretty clear from the get go, like she, this was her whole plan. She wanted to get Liz out of the picture, right? Oh, you thought that? Oh, a hundred percent. I don't think I ever oh, thought that ever. Do what? It was premeditated. She wanted to. Yeah, I think you she, thought that. I think that she thought, "Let's gag her with the jawbreaker. It's going to kill her. Like it'll be funny. She can plot. You know, she can like say it was going to be a joke." I think it was premeditated because from the get go, you know. That there's a clear, like, pull, like, I don't know, division between her and Liz, right? Yeah. Um, you know that from the get-go, from the mo- opening monologue. But then I think when she takes the picture and she's surprised, it's not because she's shocked. It's because she thinks to herself, oh, fuck, it actually, actually worked. worked. That's what I think. Because immediately I- following that, no empathy at all. She doesn't yeah. give a crap. Yeah. No empathy, no sim- nothing. Right? That is interesting. That I never thought of it that way. I didn't ever. And I I've watched this movie either. a million times. I feel like I thought of it as Courtney's like the the lead bitch and it was like she knew that she couldn't count on Julie and Marcy to like come up with what to do now and she was like, "All right, well, fight or flight so i guess i'm gonna have to make up some fucking crazy story and let's figure this out as we go because like i don't i just didn't see and it could it could be and it very well could be but for me it felt very premeditated and then everything else that happens in the movie which we haven't gotten obviously we're like getting i'm getting ahead of myself here but with like the taking the guy back and having Mm -hmm. sex in her bed like she's Mm -hmm. she thought about all this before I, and even herself, she talks about, let's make it look like she was raped, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that all comes very quickly to her. I think that's just my Mm -hmm. own take. I think Courtney was just ruthless and wanted Liz out of the picture. Interesting. And, I mean. I've never thought of it that way. But again, maybe she thought, oh my God, what if I gag her with this jawbreaker and it kills her? Like, then I'm like, Queen B. I don't have to worry about Liz anymore. But then when it actually worked, I think she was surprised. Yeah. That's that that's my that's always been my take on it. Oh, and wow. I can That makes it a lot darker. But yeah, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense in the in the way of like the the opening monologue as far as like why would they make it a point to tell us that Courtney really hated that if or it really pissed her off mm-hmm. if like there wasn't there's tension. There's been tension. Like right? motive yeah. behind what happened. Yeah. And and that's just my and that's and one of the things Marcy says, you know, when she says our best friend is dead or whatever, and she says, Do you have any idea what that means? And Marcy says, We choose you for prom queen. <laughs> You're a shoe in. You're a shoe in for prom queen. Shoe in for prom queen. So it's almost just like I mean, did you really kill her to be prom queen? I don't know. Maybe. And it just seems very... And, you know, aside from these little snippets of the parents you get throughout the movie, you get none of that with Courtney. None mm-hmm. of that. So you see, like, a family life with Marcy. You see a family life with Julie. I mean, even Liz, Liz. even though she's dead, her parents are her parents. very clearly upset when they come home. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't see ferns though. No, you see her violets. like at home though. Yes. Yeah, but you don't see any of that. It's almost like Courtney is Lone Ranger on her own. She might be, but who knows? Anyway, 
getting off topic. What a here. way to die, though. But I just, yeah, she's not bothered at all. And I just think she had the story planned the whole time. That was her. But I just, you, go ahead. Sorry, I just, did you notice at the start, they tie her hands in front of her body. So she really didn't have to die. She could have taken Pulled the it out. out of her own mouth. Oh, she could have uh, taken the. That's interesting. No, I didn't yeah, notice she could have taken that. The table. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was really tight space in that trunk. But she, was, <laughs> but she was also really small. Like she could have maneuvered around. Yeah. Well, I just wonder because if you notice, like first of all, that jawbreaker in her throat always grosses me out. I just can't even imagine okay. how that would feel. But when she shoves that jawbreaker like in her mouth, she. D- I mean, she did it so fast, like. She probably didn't even have a chance to breathe of her first breath of the day. Like it was just you roll over and bam, there it is. Do you is. think a jawbreaker could fit in your mouth? I don't I don't think you could get one past my teeth. I well, mean, maybe if it was shoved in there though. But they do have different size jawbreakers. Like I remember but eating someone I was smaller one. that were like you know, yeah. were small. It was a big I mean, but they clearly put it in her mouth. So Well, well, and- I love how it is, but that could not happen. No one's throat's big enough for that big of a jawbreaker to go down in their throat. It's a movie, Michael. <laughs> I say, and I love it, <laughs> but that wouldn't happen. It just yeah. looks gross, and her eyes are all like cloudy. That that mm-hmm. whole reveal, and even when they take the duct tape off of her mouth, it's almost like slow oh, motion. It like is. Her lips lip quiver. Quiver. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that whole scene. What is it? One is for which. Two is for, for bitch. bitch. Mm-hmm. Pop it, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of irony. Uh, irony. It is kind of ironic that, you know. Isn't it ironic? Marcy's first words is like, she's going to die. die. Well, yeah. And she did. Yeah. She did. Marcy's so aloof, though. It's so funny to me. Yeah, she really is through the whole thing. Yeah, the whole time. The whole movie. But that's what makes for a perfect sidekick for Courtney, because... She'll never suspect her for anything. Well, she'll do whatever she says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she does do whatever she says, literally, in the whole movie. Okay. Um, so then we're introduced, obviously, to Fern, who refers to Liz as what? The cat's meow? The cat's <laughs> meow. Is in my notes so, obviously, Fern is a little, I don't want to say obsessed with I don't know. It's a, it borders she line says, lesbian. She makes shapes out of her moles. She yes. yes. You're, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. So she's obsessed with Liz. I think it's very clear. Um, but I don't know if it's like a sexual thing or if it's just like a girl crush in the way like she wants to be part of the clique or she wants to be Liz. I don't know if she wants to be with her. I don't know. It's towing I that line. I feel like it's in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Oh, see, I ca- for me, I think it's just, oh, she wants... Because Liz has been is the only one that's been nice to her, mm-hmm. and I feel like she just uh, admires Liz in that way. I don't think she's attracted to her. Oh, see, I and I guess during I, that it's later in the movie though. But during that, when she talks about her, I'm the like, oh, she's in love with her. Part, the interrogation yeah. or whatever. That's what I, I mean. Get. She could be well because she's like literally like looking off into the distance and like remembering looking at the back of her neck and like all that stuff. And it's like, mm, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's towing that line, but I, but I think it that, could go either way. Yeah, I think that the yeah. attraction part comes from the fact that Liz was always the nice one to her mm-hmm. when none of the other ones were mm-hmm. like. I mean, so it's easy to be attracted to somebody that's nice to you. It is. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's totally true. And uh, she obviously knows Julie because she addresses mm-hmm. Julie in the bathroom. Yes. So you, which we do find which out, we find later, out later, later at sleepovers, right? They were childhood yeah, friends. Childhood friends. But yes, you are right. She calls her by name. So, you know, there's like some sort of history there. But they don't really Julie's don't... nice to her there. I feel like Julie. A little bit. I mean, the other two she's, don't want to give her the time of day. She steps over in the hallway, though. She might have been nice to her before, but, you know, when she, like, drops all her books and she deletes sure She does, <laughs> and Liz is the only one that stops. <laughs> she, mm-hmm. dur- she sure does. I think Julie is just dismissive, Courtney. and I think that she is scared of Courtney. Yeah. At the end yes. of the day. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A toilet stall's always that low in high schools in America. I don't remember. They, 
they stand up and you can like see like half of her chest like out of the store like you could look into them That'd be um, nice. that's a really good point <clears throat> it's not like that everywhere but i have been in bathrooms that are like that wow because i mean well ryan's six foot four so like mm-hmm. when okay but fern mayo is not six what? <laughs> <laughs> well but like she might be because we've gone over um to opryland before and their bathroom stalls are kind of like that because it always makes me uncomfortable. If I can see the person yeah, walking maybe. in front of the stall's head, I don't. That yes. makes me uncomfortable. Hmm. I'm sure I've been into a bathroom like that, but I don't. Don't pay attention. Not, but they're not like that generally. No, no. no. We have ones here that go like from floor to ceiling. That's what you need. It's like your own little oh. walking. Uh, that's water. how the Bucky's bathrooms are, and they're wonderful. Nobody wants to talk about Bucky's. Uh, do you, know what a bu- do you know what a Bucky's is, Michelle? Isn't it like a gas station? Oh my god, yes. See, even over in Australia. That? Yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> oh, I've seen it on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, Aren't people... they like the biggest gas stations in Texas? Or... Is it Texas? Well, I don't know. Where did they're they expanding, but they are from Texas, I think. Um, I've never been in one. Well, you're missing out, apparently. <laughs> I've never been in one. Mike makes special trips. I do. For some Bucky's Nuggets. What is a Bucky's Nugget? <laughs> um. Well, the ones that I get are like almost just like, almost like cheese puffs, but they're not as, well, mine are white cheddar. They're not cheddar. So like, oh. but they kind of have that consistency. Because when you say nuggets, I think like chicken nuggets. Chickens. Yeah. Same. No, no. So they're actually like cheese puffs. Yeah, they're like puffs i mean i'd love to stop in one sometime but their bathrooms literally are you get your own like when i say your own stall it's a room really yeah like there's no i mean it's literally floor to ceiling wall yeah so interesting it's nice all right well moving on from bucky yeah <laughs> Um, Leave that all in. So, <laughs> Fern Mayo. Fern Mayo. Um, I know. Okay, so one thing that I want to call out, just because it's on my mind, I really like the use of color in this movie, and I feel mm-hmm. like obviously from like the beginning, all of their outfits are very colorful. Again, very 1999. But then when she approaches the house, you see all the flowers, and they're all colorful. But then. As you go into all their bedrooms, like you see, they're they're all very colorful. So like Liz's yeah. bedroom has an array of well, colors, and like um, Julie's bedroom has an array of colors, and they've got like the geometric mobiles, like, wind chimes, or mobiles. I was like, who, yeah, well, who has these? All mobiles? the circles are meant to like call back to the jawbreaker. That's why they've like got the big hoop earrings, and everything's like you know circular. And she's got the mobile and all the rugs. Oh, I did bedding. see that too. Well, that makes sense. That's, that would make sense why everything's so colorful, too, because yeah. it's like candy, right? So yeah. I loved the use of color in this movie. And they've, they've all got their own, like, personal colors, like the red and the like, red, green, and purple, and I guess Liz is the pink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. And it's very retro, too. Like, even though it's very 99, like, a lot of the outfits I feel like they wear are kind of retro. Um like I, I, the one, the one outfit or the two I always think about is Courtney's like purple outfit with her scarf around her neck. Like that's very retro. Mm-hmm. And then Violet's, mo- I think most I was of her say. wardrobe's pretty retro. But they play a lot of older music in this movie too. Like you know, like not necessarily Connie Francis. They play a lot of yeah. older music, which I really I like. Yeah. But anyway, it's kind of funny. I never thought of the. The idea of like each of them having their own like color. Marcy loves kind of green, so yeah. it just makes sense. Well, and then it just makes me think further that like Liz's was pink and Violet's mm-hmm. kind of turns into pink. So it's like she's replacing mm-hmm. Liz. Liz. Yeah, replacing Liz, yeah. That's kind of interesting. I never thought what about What would it. Julie's be? Because she wore a lot of blue, I feel like. I think she's meant to be like the purple kind of color, but they all seem to share color. Like you'll notice that like Marcy's green, but she has like a purple purse i think you know like they sort of switch out their accessories with each other's colors oh okay i just i had actually written down i was like what kind of like the 
why do they all have these mobiles? These mobile mobiles, mobile. Yeah, they're whatever. like stained glass and it, like weird geometric. I liked them though. I just think of babies. Mm. Like <laughs> oh. that's what they hang over like baby cribs. So yeah. like I was like, why do these teenagers have these like just But maybe they're for like, you know, but they open their window on a nice breezy <laughs> Saturday and you know. Okay. I mean, I'll let you have it, but well, I still even don't. If you have a, like, just think about it like this. Let's say the room is dim, but you have a light shining on it and it's spinning. Then you're going to see those colors in your bedroom, right? That'd be kind of yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get me one of those. <laughs> Do it. Well, we didn't touch on, because I mean, we obviously have mentioned William Cat, PJ Souls. Yes. And the first time we see, like, well, the scene where, like, Fern Mayo's taking the books uh-huh. to Liz. And I was like, literally looks just like Carrie White walking down the street. Yes. She does. And mm-hmm. then we've got, obviously, the two of them playing the parents, which both in Carrie as well. There's so many Carrie things in this movie. Oh, yeah. Well, the prom. Hello. Uh, oh, yeah. They yeah. even I'm reference like Carrie the, itself. Several times. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So I just, because I don't know why, I mean, obviously, and I saw this when it came out, and I don't know why I didn't put like two and two together, because obviously I'd seen Carrie at that point too, but when she would, because when I was watching this time, as soon as they showed her walking down the street, I was like, she looks literally like Carrie White. Yeah, the way she's holding her books yes. and everything. Yeah. And her long hairs like mm-hmm. in front of her and stuff. Like, I mean, I thought that stuff was cool though. Yeah, I liked I love all the, that. I mean, you know, I love Carrie. I so I get that right out the get go. Um, so let me ask you this: If you witnessed everything that Fern witnessed, what a makeover! Like no. keep you from going to the police. I mean, I don't not think a- so. But you know, you say no though, but then you think think you're a seventeen year old. This girl. doesn't work for him. He was popular in high school. What? So you do not count. You you were were you not part of the prom court? <laughs> I lost. You were part of the prom court. Mike, were you part of the prom court? I was not. Neither was I. Michelle, were you? We don't have prom here. Exactly. <laughs> I was also nominated for homecoming king, but I don't want to talk there about it. There we go. Get out. So now you like, don't get an opinion in this. I feel like it's not so much the makeover that was gonna like keep her quiet it was just the popularity yeah and she well yeah her. like you reckon i reckon like courtney could have murdered fern like if you want to talk about her like premeditating liz's murder like she basically threatens to destroy her yeah i mean that is true like if she's capable of that and she's pretty she had no choice it, like she could have just killed fern well because yeah. at that point fern doesn't know any better fern doesn't know that they didn't literally just all three kill liz yeah. Exactly. So, if she, is she really going to go against the three most popular girls in school and think that if they killed Liz, that they're not going to kill her? That's true. So, because <laughs> ain't nobody going to miss Fern. They yeah. might miss Liz. Carol, I'd miss Fern. But... Carol Kane would. <laughs> Miss Scherzinger or whatever. What's, Sherwood. Miss Sherwood. Scherzinger. <laughs> Nicole. Oh, <laughs> I'm surprised so, Nicole Scherzinger wasn't in this movie. She's been in everything else. Gosh. Take she any, didn't exist. I mean, she was alive, but she job. wasn't around during this. <laughs> she was in the prom scene. You just missed her. <laughs> I guess that brings us to our second act. Oh, yeah. So the girls tell Fern they will make her one of them in return for her silence. When they, <clears throat> We then get a makeover montage, and Fern has become Violet. Julie is pushed out of the group and is treated like an outcast. Julie starts hanging out and dating drama club student Zach. Detective Cruz comes to the school to investigate the death of Liz. Courtney keeps telling lies to cover the murder and maintain her popularity. This includes luring a man to Liz's bed and has sex with him to frame him for the murder. Violet enjoys her newfound popularity and infuriates Courtney and Marcy. In retaliation, Courtney and Marcy blow up Fern's yearbook photo and hang it all over the school campus that says, Who is Violet? Violet has a nervous breakdown and passes out in the school hallway and is found by Julie and Zach. So dramatic. 
is, and it just goes to show you, like, really, like, you can be influenced so easily at that age because this nobody goes from literally nobody to the most popular girl in school to nobody again, like, in a couple of days, right? I mean, I feel like that's pretty accurate, though, to, like, yeah. high school life. I mean, you... I get why she had a nervous breakdown, <clears throat> though. Oh my god, me too. I would do the same thing. Um, do we love the 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 the, the makeover God montage? The makeover, sure. thank you. Makeover <laughs> montage. I love Judy Greer. I do not love her with that platinum blonde hair no. and that haircut. Not a great hair. No. Yeah, not a good look for her. Judy Greer is very pretty, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't love the look on her. I no. don't love the blonde hair. That's a weird makeover montage, too. It isn't is. It? I mean, I love it, but it's weird. It's it, super weird. <laughs> it felt, honestly, well, and this kind of comes up a little later, too, when Courtney's, like, going off on her in the bathroom and stuff. I, it felt very Rocky Horror to me, like, the creation mm-hmm. scene. It feels very scientific. Yeah. Oh, it is. Versus, I'm, like, you think of, like, Ties and clueless. Like it's fun. The girls are like <laughs> washing hair. This is like this is what we're doing. Yeah. This felt like the a creation of a completely different person. Person. Yeah. Yeah. It almost has like a musical kind of vibe to it. I always thought it looks like it could be they could break into song. Well, and aren't yeah. they? <laughs> it's good. Aren't they like wearing like weird they are sci-fi wearing, like, like looking and outfits white, right? and stuff it might be a like a throwback to all that because you had mentioned they play a lot of old songs and I mean, it could the be. looks are retro so maybe it is i mean courtney literally says the exact same line from rocky horror in it so which is when she says i'm the one that created you i can oh i made you i'm god yeah like that's all it's, I need, it's need the one in know. the bathroom yeah, I created you, and I can take it away, or whatever oh, that whole thing. Yeah. And it's the same thing that Frank says to Rocky. Oh well, maybe it is <clears throat> a callback to Rocky. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, right? You know, look, Jawbreaker is kind of campy, right? Kind of. Mm-hmm. Well, very. it's very campy, <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised. Platinum blonde which hair, makes me leather, like, <laughs> which makes me like it even more because I never really thought about the Rocky horror. Um, connections, connections. Yeah, I mean, this movie does a lot of that, though. So yeah. So at this point, Julie's pushed out of the group. Completely, she's an outcast amongst them. We get a whole new walk scene in the hallway. We sure yes, do. to yeah. that song. I'm cool. I'm cool. <clears throat> that song, right? I'm so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a great song to walk down a school yeah. hallway to. I mean, so whenever. We see Detective Cruz walk down the hallway for the first time. I don't know why I knew she was in this movie, but I'm sitting here and I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the real Foxy Cleopatra. Yeah. yeah. She's a whole lot of women, you know? <laughs> Pam Greer looks so fucking I love, good in this movie. I love Pam, Pam. I just wonder if that was why, if that, if they kind of gave Marcy that nickname as like a throwback um, like to a, her. Yeah. To be oh, yeah. in Foxy. Like, yeah. God, I love Pam Greer in this Me movie. Too. I mean, she is beautiful. I mean, I'm and just, she ain't taking no shit either. No, I no, love. She I ain't. love Pam. Yeah, I love her in this movie. I love. I would love to see more of her and Miss Sherwood together. Because when she's questioning her, you know, Miss Sherwood's very upset. Like, obviously, everybody loves Liz, including the teachers. But I just like their dynamic together. I don't know. It's some. I would just like to have seen more of them together, I think. Because they're so different. They're so different. Yeah. yeah. And I love Carol Kane, too, so. Well, yeah. Carol Kane is an amazing character actress. Yes. Like, she's great. Um, I think that was perfect casting, and I don't think any other two women could have played those roles. No. Yeah. Well, they could have, but I wouldn't have liked it nearly as much. Yeah. So, what do you think of the... I love the whole cafeteria scene. Mm-hmm. Where um, Julie's sitting with the body art rejects. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm, obviously, this <laughs> She's was. She's got her little purse. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls up her purse. I mean, which I know that this was obviously out before it, but like literally the entire scene of Mean Girls basically is. Which is only five years later. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, they do kind of like okay. There's the there's the whatever the table. carpenter table. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very Courtney Shane is Regina George. Yeah. Like that's just kind She's of the original Regina George. Yeah. But I do love that whole conversation when um, what's his Dean, the other Dean. guy. Oh, can I just I the hate idiot. Dean. <laughs> Courtney's boyfriend. <laughs> yes. Oh, I hate Dane? him. And I don't even think he's that said, cute. I don't even think he's the boyfriend. No. He's, I don't know what he is. But yeah. Michelle, do you find him attractive? No. Okay, good. So we're all in agreement. I mean... Well, Mike, you look. Like he was a douchebag, but... <laughs> uh, look, in 99, when I was 14 years old watching this, did that scene oh, where he's yeah. licking all over that lollipop do me? Sure it did. Oh, well, don't... But, a, like... Look, that's a fun scene. <laughs> <laughs> And it just makes you think too, like, what the fuck is Courtney into? Like, is she into gay porn? Like, does she is that what she gets off on? Because she's, she's basically a gay man. Yeah, she's into, uh, yeah, she's into. Pink. Well, there's a reason why all the all of us gay men love Courtney Shane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Anyways, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But yeah, the the scene where she's like, Dean walks up, and that's basically where we get Violet's name, literally just like off the cuff. Uh huh. And I think it's so funny when I mean, obviously her name is Rose. So when yeah. she's going on about like, uh, no, don't call anybody or don't give them a rose or something unless they're dyed black with something, something, something. Yeah. And I was like, girl, you that were is, too much. That's <laughs> funny. I will say this, um, cause I had this written a little earlier. Rose McGowan, for me, this is her best performance. Oh, a hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like don't. <laughs> I love Rose and Scream. I love Rose and Planet Terror and Death Proof. Actually, I almost kind of think I like her character in Death Proof a little more. But her, this is her best performance. But man, the way that she delivers these lines is just like so. Like I believe her. Yeah. Like I believe every word that's coming out of her mouth. Well, you know, you have movies where like actors say that like this role was literally like made for you, and I feel like that's, that's made for her. this role for her. Yeah. Because all her little things that she like just does like off the cuff like when she says something about oh god when they're talking about like what they're eating like and she says we don't we would never eat out of a brown paper bag or whatever and she's like she does that little giggle and she like shakes her little head she does a lot of really fun stuff with yeah (laughs) so funny to me and i'm pretty sure in there line where she says like toodles or something Mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. smiles gives that like toothy grin like she yeah. just delivers her lines so like, well in this movie. We don't kill people on purpose, sort of. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. There's a lot of great one-liners in this movie. Yeah, there is a lot of great ones. And they're mostly from Rose McCown. I mean, yeah. This was... Anyway. Oh, it was the... Um, I better not have kids. I have zero patience. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh. What is... um? What are they t- when they're talking about a big greasy pizza, and then she says complexion something, complexion defection or whatever, something like that. Yeah. And Marcy's like, "Oh, touching her face." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too. It's just too much. That whole scene is great, though. Yeah, it is really good. And poor Fer- Fern, she's gonna eat her like tuna sandwich that her mom made her. <laughs> I know, and she's what so. What do you think was in that bag? It was a tuna fish sandwich. You think it was? T- I think it was tuna and a bag of chips. I don't think. I think it was. A tuna sandwich. A pickle. A celery. Oh, a pickle. No, celery. Definitely a pickle. What? An applesauce cup. <laughs> An apple- <laughs> a, a chocolate a ca- chip cookie. A Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because like when she, when Courtney like goes off on her about that, it's just funny where Fern's like, I'm sorry. She's so like apologetic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we get the, uh, we do get the little bit of, care for a little bit of kink. Yes. So what do we think of... Uh, so obviously, we, we you know, you talked about that scene a little bit. And kind of Michelle made a comment about it earlier. What about, and like... It, isn't her, wouldn't her DNA be on her... You know how like she goes and picks up Marilyn Manson and takes him back? Wouldn't her DNA you know, be everywhere? I, I everywhere? thought about that. I was yeah. like, you cannot tell me that there isn't some form of a hair or a yes. bodily fluid or... <sighs> True. Even at the start when they're like cracking her neck and like breaking her legs open, like they'd have to. I know that. Getting out the rigor mortis. Not super careful. But I also think too, if they're all best friends, they're probably at each other's house. The DNA is all over the place. So if they find, 
one of Courtney's hair. Well, big deal. She's over there all the time. Same with Julie That's a good Foxy, point. You know? Um, but bodily fluids? Was was Courtney peeing on the bed? I mean, you never know. <laughs> I mean, she could have been wet. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh I mean, her and Marilyn were together at the time, so. I mean, well, and I don't know if it ever shows it. So when it shows that scene. He's so gross. So he is gross. gross. But, you know, she's got on an outfit, like a corset and a leather dress, like a leather skirt. I don't know if you ever see her hands or not. But she could have had gloves on. I mean, that would have... I just think of her look. Like, if she were to have gloves on, I wouldn't Mm -hmm. have been surprised by that. You know? So, I don't know. Oh, and he is getting it, too. Isn't he? (laughs) Ugh. So gross. (laughs) Yeah, and what world? Liz Parr would never. Never. (laughs) Never. What do you guys think of Zach? I think he's cute. I think he's cute. I like him. I never thought about it that way. He's fine. They're cute together. He's a nice guy, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And obviously, I would say maybe even a little insecure because he makes a comment about, well, I never really said anything to you because I didn't think Mm -hmm. until he sees her waiting for the school bus. And gives her a ride home. Courtney's not taking her to school anymore. (laughs) She's got to ride the school bus. Um, Did y'all ride a school bus? In high school? No. I drove. Oh, before that, Michael. <clears throat> in middle school? Yeah, like, did you take Half and school? half. My okay. mom took me to school, or I rode the school bus. Yeah, I was a car rider. Oh. Um, which just, I mean, my parents took me. But in high school, I did until I got you my got license. license. Michelle, did you ride a school bus? Uh, it wasn't a school bus, but I did two years on the bus. We don't have sort of school buses like you guys do. Oh. It's just public transport, but it's not. <laughs> Oh, it's probably, always probably better than a damn school bus. I was going to say, I've, I've only ever seen that because obviously here we have school buses. I've only ever seen that in like the movies where like kids are in like big cities and they take school. public transportation to school. <laughs> I rode a school bus pretty much until I was yeah old enough to drive. Because uh, even when my stepbrother started driving, I was like, man, I'm good. Um, yeah. And I used to get really irritated because my stepmom and my dad both work, you know, my dad has a business. So she worked with him at one point and I'm like, you can't take us to, it's seven minutes down the road. And it would drive me crazy because I was always the first to get on the school bus and the last to get off. So I would be on the bus for like 45 minutes every day there and back. And I used to get so irritated. Like you really can't take me to, it's seven minutes down the road. And they wouldn't do it. They made me ride the bus. Anywho, I'm not bitter about it. PTSD <laughs> over here. Yeah. When Zach drops Julie off, she has a phone call with Violet. She calls Violet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it cracked me up because she very obviously calls information. Remember information? You can yes. call them and get a telephone number. 411. Yeah, and she's like, uh, Mayo, please. It's a residence. And then they <laughs> dial her into Fern's house and they have a little chit chat and talk about you know, their sleepovers or whatever. When it they was. were in second grade. Yeah, or when they were kids. And I really like Violet's line where she says, Time doesn't erase things, people erase things. Which I don't necessarily, I mean, time erases things. Let's be real. It's not people per se. But in the context of this movie, it is absolutely people. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So then the cops make their rounds and then. We have the interrogation scene. Well, old boy and Courtney. That's when they show up to the house, right? Oh, Courtney and Dane. That's his name. Yeah. Um, Dean. Dean or Dane? Dane. 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 Yeah, Dane. I think it's. I thought it was Dean too. (laughs) Maybe I was just thinking of Jensen Ackles. It's fine. Dane. Dane. (laughs) Dane. 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 It sounded like Dane to me. Oh, is it Dane? It is Dane. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about this some more. <laughs> I thought it was Dane. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, the way you guys say it, it sounds pretty similar to me anyway. <laughs> true. True. So, <laughs> I just feel like a 17-year-old. Like, do, do 17-year-olds look like that without their clothes they, on? They didn't when I was in high school. they didn't when I did. Like... 
look. So what you <clears> want, <throat> he's an asshole, but like he's got a pretty good body. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Obviously, or he wouldn't have been cast in this movie. Um, he had one role. This was it. This was, was it, right? This was his moment. <laughs> I wonder if he's been in anything else, because I don't know him. No. You know? I mean, I don't know Zach either. Oh, I don't either. I don't so. either. You know, I will say this, and this is totally off topic, but the girl that plays Liz Per, I don't know what her name is off the top of my head, but she was actually in The Rage Carrie 2. She plays Rachel Blanchard's best friend. Yeah. Which is funny that her parents are OG carry members. Yeah, and then funny. she's because when did the rage come out? It was it was about right, the same right, time, right? So yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. And she is a really pretty girl. But anyway, what does she say though before she walks out? He's like, "Don't leave, don't, don't come, come. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but then it, I Bye. think it, he looks down, and it's like made pretty obvious that he's come already, right? Well, I mean, his faces before she walked out were pretty expressive. So yeah, true. So he's definitely. <laughs> but yeah, the a late late man. <laughs> <laughs> late nineties reference. So do we like um, Cruz's questioning? I like that montage. I do too. For asking them all the questions. Mm-hmm. I do too. When she slams the door, break it down. Yes, like, yes. she's <laughs> aggressive. She's good at her job. Yeah. Like obviously, she's trying to get some answers, right? So, um. Yeah, again, Pam Greer looks uh, is great in this role. Um, and then finally, the school finally makes an announcement because, oh God, I feel like the movie's like halfway over at this point and you know that Liz is gone, but nobody else does. And then the school makes the announcement and you see Julie walking down the hallway by herself. Everybody else is like in a freeze frame. Reminds me of like Saved by the Bell when Zach Morris would be out. like, stop. <laughs> and people would just stop, but you could still see them moving a little bit. Um, and she walks down the hallway <sighs> and, you know, and then you just like, right, I don't know. That just kind of reiterates what I felt, um, like about it being premeditated. Like Julie is the only one that cares. Foxy's just going to go along with Courtney, Courtney, no matter what. And Courtney doesn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And Julie is really bothered by it. Well, Julie wanted to talk, call the cops from the beginning. She absolutely did. I just think it's funny how <clears throat> on the interrogation scene, like their stories are like all over the place. <laughs> I feel like Courtney's is the one that's like, like the quickest answers. Yes. And then everybody else's is just like, because you know, they're all separate, which is what they do. Just try to make sure the stories match. And then a lot of times I'm like, what? none of them they match. Don't. I do love it when Pet. <laughs> Pam Greer goes, who is she fucking? And Marcy goes, no one! (laughs) (laughs) I love it. But again, Courtney knew what she was doing. She was like throwing those little bits in there. Like, yeah, maybe Liz was a little bit of a slut. I don't know. But then then she comes back. And then when she goes back to say, well, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. Yeah, let me tell you what Liz is really like. Mm-hmm. Okay, girl. She's like, in a strange man or something. She yeah, says older man, like really strange men. Yeah, yeah. So again, I just think it like <sighs> she knew what she was doing from the get go. Anyway, um, also this is um, so we've talked about you know the fuck scene or whatever between the gross guy at the bar and Kathy Merlin Manson and Courtney. But before we go like any further, I just have to say. Because I put an asterisk by this, so it's really important. (laughs) I love each and every one of Julie's looks in this movie. I think Rebecca Gayhart looks so fucking good in every single scene. Mm -hmm. She does. Towards the beginning, she's a little more like, um, what's the word, like flashy. Like Courtney and Marcy, and then she kind of tones it down a little bit as the movie goes on. She still looks so good, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. She does. God, so pretty. I well, love her. I mean, heart. what? Isn't that they what she could color about? the face or something. Yeah. Said yeah. she was popular because of her face. So yeah, yeah. a face like that. A face yeah. like yeah. that. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I love all. To be fair, I like all of Rose McGowan's looks in this movie too. Yeah, the costumes are amazing. Yeah, really- I mean the wardrobe is just like Chef's Kiss. I just I just picture Rebecca Gayhart that there's like one scene where I guess it's kind of a close up on her face 
girl's got some of those butterfly clips in and it just makes me laugh. Oh, does she? That girl, they love the butterfly clips in 99. <laughs> yes, they do. God, what scene was that? Why I don't even remember. Clips? Um, okay, so I guess before we move on to like our finale here, let's talk about Courtney versus Violet. How do we feel about that relationship when Violet becomes a little, which is a little strange because let's be real. She's been Violet for like two days. I feel like it looks <laughs> awkward. I feel like Violet doesn't even know how, to, she's popular, but she doesn't even know how to be popular. Yeah. Yeah. So she's just like doing whatever, smoking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> she gets that red convertible. Yeah. She, yeah. With bitch on the license plate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then, yeah. like, she's pulling a Tawny Katan out on, like, the hood of the car in front of the school. To be fair, I feel like <clears throat> she's literally just doing what she thinks Courtney would do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Uh, especially with, like, the bitch license plate. And then, like, <laughs> I just think the one scene is really funny when Courtney and Marcy are in the hallway. And they're like, what the fuck is that? And then they go outside, and I'm like, how did you, how did you, all, hear, how did you that? hear that from inside the school? <laughs> yeah. Second of all, then, like, fucking Violet is on the hood of that car, like, having a fucking spasm or something, like, shaking her head. <laughs> and everyone's watching. <laughs> she is. She is getting it. And then they take her into the bathroom, right? And when, I and will then... say, when she, like, pushes her up against that mirror, she pushes her hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's where we get the line, I made you, I can break you just as easily. Yes. And then she says, good idea. Kill, kill, kill me, me like you did, did Liz. Liz. Yeah, yep. exactly. Oh, like, I'm telling you, she's taking pages right out of Courtney's book. Well, that, so, in that scene where she, like, blows the smoke in Courtney's face or whatever, that was improv. Oh, was no, it? it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was perfect. And Rose McGowan had no idea that she was obviously going to do that. And so, like, when she yanks the cigarette and, like, throws it down, she was, like, gross. That was, like, her reaction, that was her reaction to it. reaction to it. Oh, interesting. I like it. I mean, it was smart then. Because yeah. it's, it's an authentic reaction. Organic. Mm-hmm. I like it. And then, so, the next day, the downfall of Violet starts. <laughs> When she passes out by that car, it just makes me laugh, though. <laughs> she passes out twice. <laughs> and the, then, like, when she wakes up in the, like, the... Nurse's room? Nurse's room or whatever. And she has that bandage. She, Girl, how hard yes. did you fall? <laughs> I, yeah, she had, exactly. yeah, her head was wrapped real good, right? And wasn't it, like, bleeding through? Yes. 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 <laughs> Maybe she she had, hit like, that concrete hard. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, when she when she falls, it just makes me laugh because she rules the school in that moment when she pulls up in that car. She sure does. And hi, girls! Like all these kids, like even when Zach and Julie like pull up, do all of y'all just get to park right in front of the school steps? Wherever you want, wherever like, you want. I love that whole thing too. Like Fern Mayo's been missing from school for days. I told you nobody missed her. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> Well, I also think it's weird. Are you talking about the parking? Like, Courtney has her own parking spot. It says reserved for Courtney yeah, Shane. Their name on it. <laughs> well, it's Courtney. Well, I didn't have a. Where was. I, well, it just makes me think, okay, well, if Courtney's. Like, if she has a reserved spot. If she made that damn spot, sign herself. Maybe she did. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, well, if she had one, then Liz probably had one too, right? Or maybe they I feel like Courtney picked one. everyone up. I mean, she may have. I mean, I definitely feel like Courtney Shane is the one that She's would the be queen like, bee. I well, get a parking spot. Well, I also yeah. feel like, okay, so I'm just going to hear me out. I feel like Courtney Shane could easily be a Virgo, right? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and if that's the case, then she started school late. So she got her license before everybody else. And that's why she does all the driving. And that's why she does all the driving. That would make sense. I can relate to that. Yeah. We're gonna Can go. you? Yeah, we're going to go with that. I th- Oh, my God. Yeah, are you kidding? I think Courtney is a total Virgo. She's a control freak. <laughs> she is a Virgo. Right? I think I may have said that when we were watching it. I'm like, Courtney is a Virgo. I think you did. I always <laughs> I always see Virgos and everything now. I'm like, oh, God. She, that girl's a Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I was about to say, do you look at people and go, God, they're just like Keith. Ex- that's at- exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I am not that bad. Now, I would not tie Mike up and put him in a trunk with a jawbreaker in his throat. Uh, no. No gag reflex anyway. No, I, I was going to say, just go right down Mike's throat. He wouldn't even worry about it. Could you imagine? Just pass right through. Yeah. I don't You'd open the trunk up and be like, hey, girl. He'd be like, why can't you give me something bigger? 
Oh my god. Try watermelon next time. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Michael. I don't know what I was gonna say. So then she comes out and she caught is walking through the hallway and passes That's out again now. and Courtney says to her, It's over, bitch, or Marcy does. I don't remember what I think yeah, it's Courtney because Marcy's It's yeah. over, <laughs> bitch. Oh, doing yeah. her very exaggerated laugh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then so Violet passes out and then Julie and the rest Zach you, right? find her. She's like wrapped up in her posters. Her posters. <laughs> and she's like, she's so evil and she's only in high school. Well, and even in this moment though, like when they walk in to find her on the floor, like she is still hanging on to I'm not very mayo. I'm Violet. Yeah. Yes. So like That's it, what popularity will do to you, apparently. Yeah. She I got mean, a taste, she didn't want to let it go. Because she like ran out of the nurse's station when nurse called her firm. Yes. Yes. That's a good point. And then so let's go to the prom. Well, before we go. Okay. There's one line that I really, really like. And it's when Julie Um, and her have that confrontation towards the very end. And they're at the locker. You know, she says, it's over, Courtney. And she says, I am petrified and moves her arm out of the way. There's one part where she says, I don't know, I don't I can't even remember what Courtney says, but she says something about a bitch. And Julie goes, No, Courtney, you're the bitch. I don't know what it I'm like, <laughs> Yes, Julie! <laughs> Finally standing up to her. I love that part. Anyways. I, I love that whole interaction between them two. So Yes. Well, and like we were talking about earlier, the way that Rose delivers lines, like when she says, I am petrified, she has this like nod on her face. And then the way she moves her arm out of the way, like, it's just so good. Like, it's all amazing. Anyways. Perfect. So later that night, everyone converges converges onto school for senior prom. Convergence. (laughs) Courtney goes with jock (laughs) dumbass Dean. They. Dane. Tell us how you really feel. (laughs) Dane. They both know they are a shoe in for prom king and queen. Principal Sherwood announces the winners and surprise, surprise. Dane is king and Courtney is queen. As Courtney is giving her speech, a familiar voice is heard over the PA system. We find out that Courtney accidentally recorded herself, which we actually found earlier, um, admitting to killing Liz. Deal with it. And the whole school finds out. Everyone turns on Courtney and calls her every name in the book. That bitch. That's Motherfucker! <laughs> That's one of my so favorite parts. When we were watching that, I said, here comes my favorite part. And it's when she says, Bad bitch! <laughs> As she is trying to leave, Julie takes a photo of her all disheveled. And the movie Smile, ends. I, I can't. Her... You know what? Let's just not even talk about the ending yet. We could talk about, like... Well, I guess yes. this is the ending. It's this, all the problems. Yeah, this is the ending. Yeah. But like, yeah, Julie. (laughs) I love that the whole. Okay, so I like the the. Okay, first of all, let me just say this: the fucking Donnas are in every teen movie from the nineties, performing at the prom, right? Hundred percent. The drive me crazy. Drive me crazy. Yes, uh, they're in every movie, and it just comes around. They just had a record store day release. Did they? Their greatest hits by the Donnas. Yes. (laughs) I don't even know. Greatest hits. What, well, that's it's been 20 years. Take it, take it off. That was it. <laughs> well, and I think they were probably, I mean, look, they're in all these movies. So they were probably popular, maybe in California. You know what I'm saying? Like on a smaller yeah. scale before they ever like hit it big and mainstream. But um, they are in a lot of 90s movies. Anyways, yes, the Donnas. It's not a 90s movie without the Donnas performing at Japan. <laughs> um, so one thing I do have a question about. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Ju- they're not going to go to the prom, right? They're just going to sit it out. Julie gets the card, opens it up. Here's the recording. And I love that scene when she closes it and puts it on her chest and they start playing that music and she jumps off the bed. I love that scene. Um, but then a limo. Like, where? First of all, where did you get these clothes so quick? Where did you get your corsages? And how did you get that limo rented so quick? This is California, right? Well. Where is this? Well, but I mean. I think it's California. These are realistically though, like how long do you think like what is the time span of this movie? 
Because, I feel like it's just I mean, a couple would days. Think that I it's maybe like a week. Yeah. I was going to say, because at that point, you would have already had your... I mean, well, no, I went Already would have had all oh, that stuff. True. You would have already... But maybe not a corsage, though. I mean, maybe not that part. But, like, as far as the dress... Maybe they went to Liz Perza's parents' house and just picked a flower out of their... <laughs> maybe. I mean, they had every color. <laughs> but, yeah, like... So, I mean, I feel like that is... They could probably get away with that. But I agree. Limo, I was like, y'all got a limo real fast. But I guess if you're rich, you can do anything. So I exactly. I mean, Beverly Hills. We we went there literally. <laughs> okay, so let me just say this: when they and they show up to the prom, they look great, whatever. Um, Marcy, Marcy, that crimped Marcy to me looks like the goth girl. The crimped hair and you know the goth girl, the, yeah. the multicolored the hair. Yeah, you got a stillborn. She has a few lines in this yeah. movie. Cool. Yeah. She looks like her when she's like I don't know. She's very like she's wearing a lot of darker clothes and her hair is crimped and whatever. Clearly, has no interest in being there because she tells and pisses Courtney off. Yeah, and then she like genuinely apologizes, you know. And then and it just goes to show you how dedicated. She is to Courtney because when she wins, she is like tears in her eyes, clapping. Well, she's Courtney. a follower because her dad even says, I watched Oprah. <laughs> and you're a follower. Yeah, when they're reminiscing and she does not like Tiffany that. concert. Yes. <laughs> I think we're alone now. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anyone I'm around. I, I love that part. She's terrible to her dad. He's so sweet. He is. Poor, who's Jeff that? Conway. Jeff Conway yeah. from Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. She, was, she was so nice to him. Um, or he, he was, was so no nice, nice to her. her. And she's terrible. Um, makes me think that the mom was probably a total cunt and left him with the, the daughter. That's what I get. From probably. That. Um, but I do find it is interesting. Like after all the shit goes down and they announce her as prom queen and all the shit happens. You don't see, you never see Marcy again. She's right? no. hiding under the table. She's hiding. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And then that's, <clears throat> you don't see She her knows anymore. her reign's over because she's tied to Courtney yeah. so much. Well, and maybe she does that because she's afraid people will turn on her too, just as quickly as mm. they did on Courtney. And that just, again, go, look how easily people are influenced because there were no questions asked. Like, was that a joke? Like, they just turn on her right then and there. They do. Mm-hmm. That's her voice. Nice. <laughs> I love how everything's slowed down. I do too. I love the slow motion. Yeah. I do. I like it a lot. Is she sure bosses Miss Sherwood around though? Miss Sherwood, Sherwood put- fix it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she does. I think Miss Sherwood is scared of her. I think everyone is. Everybody right? is scared of Courtney. Courtney Sh- Courtney Shay? Courtney Alice Shane. Shane. Yeah. Shane. Yeah. And her middle name Alice. Though, Courtney Alice Shane. I'd be scared of her too. Yeah, I mean, she's terrifying I again, but she's like squeezing her head and her eyes go weird. Like, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, well, when they're throwing the. F- First of all, I'm like, okay, this looks like. Did y'all watch the Game of Thrones? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when Cersei walks down naked and there's the like, food and oh, stuff shame. at her. Yeah. Literally, that's what it reminded me of. But I'm like, I mean, come it's on. Corsages it's and it's bunet- flowers. Bunet- it's like, it's not a bad game. Bunet- like, what is it called? Bootnets. 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 Yeah. Yeah. How could you? You are dead. <laughs> I is it, love all isn't of t- it. Isn't Tiana yes. Lee just crying? <gasps> what? Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. She. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that whole walk of shame. It is so good. And then you got Jolie there at the Eat end. Shit. Yes, I love that too. Waves oh, at her. Love that. I love it. But I love it. And I even like the song that they play, like Fairy Tales, Kim Oh, Kim yeah. True. Like, yeah. I love that's like the perfect song to Young play in this. And then. Smile Pretty. Yeah, well, I like how it's all in everything is in slow motion, right? Until she gets to Julie. It's very dramatic, and, too. She's like. Yeah, because she's her mm-hmm. hair's like messing up. Yeah. But it's all in slow motion until she gets to Julie. And then she says, Smile Pretty, Courtney. Courtney. And then she's. Yeah. <laughs> and then I love, I love the closing part. line too. Again, where um, you know, this is something Violet's told Doc, uh, Detective Cruz already, but it ends with this is high school Detective Cruz. What is a friend anyway? Mm-hmm. And it's like boom, mic drop, done. Perfect way to sum up that movie, right? Perfect yeah. ending to this movie. Mm-hmm. I will talk about how much I like it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I was going to get ahead of myself. That was a Taylor Swift reference just for you, Mikey. I <laughs> know. Uh, you don't give me those very I often, don't. so I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So before we move on to our final thoughts, it's time for everyone's favorite segment, Horror Fried Theater. Mike, mm -hmm. do you want to set the scene, please? Michelle, how excited are you? This is her first Horror Fried ready. Theater. <laughs> this is your first. Uh, have you looked at it yet? Oh, no, she did. Talk. <laughs> okay, don't look at it yet. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because they haven't seen anything. They have Nothing. no idea. We have no idea what oh. scene this is. Oh, I'm excited, Michelle. It's your first <clears throat> one. I know. Um. Well, so this. I hope you picked a good one. Well, well, we'll, well. just see here well. in a second. <laughs> well. Um. Scene opens. Literally. Oh. Just tell us what it is. With um, Zach and Julie rolling up to the school to find Violet passed out on the ground. Oh. Okay. Are we going to do that whole scene? Like yeah. After okay. Yes. So, um, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. It, it basically starts right at the nurse station. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm excited. Here's yours. Thank you. Here's yours. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's literally like it is. I know. You cost it correctly. <clears throat> I sure did. Um oh. No. What? Because oh well I guess it would have been because you were technically Liz in the monologue. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, and Michelle was Julie. Yeah. Yeah. So you you You're are the new, oh the God, new Liz. I, I nailed it. I am. I have like a <laughs> I have ESPN or something. Oh. Wrong movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amanda Seafried's not in this one. Okay. Um, but to set the scene a little bit, um, obviously I'll do the um the narration stuff, so that's fine. Which is also why I gave myself the role of the nurse, also Marcy, because nurse only has like what a few lines here in the beginning. Um, but Michael is going to be Violet. Michelle is going to be Julie. Keith is going to be Miss Shane. And then, like I said, I'll be Marcy. So, Foxy. Yep. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. <sighs> Hang on. I'm going to really get into oh. the Oh my god, we got a method actor over here. He's laying down. I wish we were on camera. Michelle, can you see him laying down? No. Oh my god, he is laying down <laughs> in this chair. You should have bandaged his head. All right. I mean, I can push him down on the ground real quick. <laughs> yeah, just it. kidding. I would never do that. He's too precious. He's perfect. He's fine. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> You know, sometimes when we're watching movies, there's some moles on his neck, and I make designs on them. Okay, anyways. <laughs> sea monkey? Uh, there's moles on his butthole. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, what is it? Sea monkeys? Yes, yeah, a sea monkey. And what monkey, else does she find? Big Dipper, a spider's web. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All kinds of stuff. Fern has a really vivid imagination. Yes, she does. Okay. I'm ready. We ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Greetings, maniacs and mad men. This is Dr. Gang Green, physician of fright and Nashville horror host. Coming up next is everyone's favorite segment, Horror Fried Theater. Grab your popcorn and refreshments, pull up a slab, and get ready for the madness. The scene opens with Violet pulling up to the front of the school. Pictures of Fern Mayo are plastered all over the building, the windows, the steps. Students confused as to what's going on and why these pictures are everywhere. Violet's mortified when she sees the pics of her former self for everyone to see, and she passes out next to her car. She wakes up in the office with the school nurse. Well, there you are. You had quite a fall, my dear. What happened? You fainted out in the quad. I want you to take it easy. Fern? <laughs> what did you say? Well... Your name is Fern Mayo, correct? No, it's not. Well, that's what it says right here. Get me out of here. When Violet exits the school nurse and into the hallway, 
She's greeted with the student body standing in the hallway, gawking at her, pointing, calling her names. Everyone realizes that she is, in fact, Fern Mayo. She frantically begins to run around, ripping the posters down from the lockers and the walls with Fern's picture on them. Students continue to heckle her and crumple the posters up and throw them at her. At the end of the hall, she runs into Courtney and Marcy, standing arm in arm, both of them smiling at her while she looks terrified. Violet faints in the hallway in front of the two girls. It's over, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Julie pulls up to the front of the school in Zach's car. Walking up the steps, they see the Fern Mayo poster scattered everywhere on the ground. What the hell is this? They both walk into the school to find Violet laying on the floor, wrapped up in the Fern Mayo posters. Julie and Zach both lean down to help. Fern, oh my god, Fern, are you okay? Violet begins to come too. Fern, it's me, Julie. I'm not Fern. Oh my god. It's okay, Fern. Go away. It's okay. Please just go away. How can you look at me? I'm shit. I'm reprehensible. No, you're not. I'm nothing. Before all this, I was something. I mean, I wasn't much, but I was something. You were a good person, Fern. A lot of good that did me. I'm shit. I'm no a nobody. I don't blame you for what you did, Fern. I know what it's like to be scared. That day at Liz's house, we were terrified. It's not like you had a choice. I'm so sorry, Julie. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I know. Julie leans in to hug Violet while she continues to apologize. Heels clicking on the floor. Courtney and Marcy walk up on the scene. What a fucking tearjerker. Look, Mars, it's like Terms of Endearment Part 3. Only this time, the boyfriend's gay. Yeah, and the rest of the cast sucks. <laughs> Julie jumps up from the floor and lunges towards Courtney. Who the fuck are you? What? They found some poor guy and they charged him with murder. What have you done, Courtney? What have you done? Just what I had to do, dear. What? Destroy another life, Courtney? Life's a bitch, then you die. No, honey. You're the bitch. Oh, so aggressive, Julie. Kind of turns me on. Mm, I'm sure Fern likes it. <laughs> Come on, Mars. This train wreck's getting old. Courtney turns to leave and Julie blocks her by putting her hand up to the locker, blocking her in. It's over, Courtney. I am petrified. See you at prom tonight, Julie. In scene. So this is Dr. Gang Green saying goodbye and thanks for joining us here at Horror Fried Theater. See you on the next episode of the Horror Fried Podcast. And be sure and join me every Saturday night for Dr. Gang Green Sanitarium. Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Nashville's NECAT Channel 9 and simulcast on the NECAT Roku channel and drgangreen.com. And as always, remember to stay mad. <laughs> See, that wasn't so bad. This was a short, short one. one. Oh, it was short and sweet, and I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Did it turn you on? <laughs> I did like it. It's time for our final finger licking thoughts, y'all, here at Horror Fried. We rate our films using the heat scale of a Nashville delicacy, hot chicken, on a scale of one to five, no spice, mild, medium, hot, and Nashville hot. Michelle, as our guest of honor, Tell me what you think about this movie. So I remember seeing this movie for the first time when I was like 12, which was probably not an appropriate age to be watching this movie. But I've loved it from the beginning, so I'm giving it a Nashville hot. Ooh! (laughs) I love it. Uh, Michael? I'm going to give it a Nashville hot as well. I remember seeing it when it first came out, and it just keeps getting better. I (laughs) love As we said earlier, this is Rose McGowan's best performance. Mm-hmm. And I love everyone in this movie. Yeah. Love everything about it. And I love some camp, so. Yes. Mike. And some camp. Look, this movie is almost, what, 25 years old? It is. At this it point. Is. It's 24. Last year. Yeah. <laughs> and That's what it, felt it like. just never gets old for me. And 
obviously here I am watching it and I picked up on all those like new things and it's like you just it just kind of takes on like a new meaning I feel like as you get older Uh uh-huh because then I'm just like man kind of relate to Courtney Shane all these little (laughs) one-liners and shit that she says but um all of that to say I am a Nashville hot (laughs) get tired of doing that (laughs) Okay, you Kelly Clarkson. Pop. Yeah, I know. I can't bow, 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 bow. Yeah, that's really good. You should have been doing it the whole time. <laughs> uh, um, I'm honestly, I, well, I'm not surprised, but I'm pleased that we're all unanimous because I also give it a Nashville hot. Yes. Bow, 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 bow. Um, I mean, what's else? What's left to say? I feel like this is such like. It's just, this movie is so iconic, especially from, like, us growing up, like, you know, in 99, mm-hmm. like, and then even a few years following, like, this was very much, like, our gen- like a movie from our generation, and the performances are so good, the wardrobe, so good, I love the music, like I said, I like all the retro, one thing I didn't mention earlier is Zach's car, love his old car, mm-hmm. um, Love, they all have old cars. Yeah, I love the drive-in theater that they go to. Like, mm-hmm. I love all these callbacks. I love all the cameos. Love the transitions, the sound effects. I love everything about it. Like, there's literally nothing I like. I don't don't like, just like. Yeah, like I love this. I just love it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's interesting because like there's so many movies that nowadays like you know we already talked about Mean Girls. So like this was only five years later, which right. seems crazy it to very, me. It feels very much like they pull from that. Yeah. But then this kind of feels like it pulls a little bit from like Clueless and like maybe Heather's a little yes, bit. Yes, like yeah. it's so I, which of course are some of my favorite movies. Yeah. yeah. So I watched Heather's for the first time. Yes, with you. Did, you. did you like, like it? Month? I did. I love. I mean, I like this better. Heathers? I've never seen Heather. You know, I haven't seen many. Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. Yes, literally, <laughs> lick it up, baby. Lick you know, this movie up. got really bad reviews when it came out, though. Okay, well, who cares? I'm just saying it got bad reviews, yeah. and as time went on, people reassessed it. Yeah, yeah. which is crazy. But, I because again, I'm kind of like Michelle. Like I've loved it from the beginning, right? Like the first me time too. I saw it. Um. But I also think it's one of those movies, as because there's a lot of movies that I saw when I was around that age, and I just remember loving. But now when I watch when I watch them, I'm like, eh. you know what I mean? Like I'll give you a really good example. I know what you did last summer. Obvi- I still love. I know what you did last summer. But when I watch it now, there are so many things that are cringe to me. Like, <laughs> but this movie, no. Like, there's no. I can't pick anything out of this movie. That is like I love all of it. I, mean, I think I that's the was... camp factor though it gets away with it because it's campy. Yeah, or I know what you did last summer isn't. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Like there's exactly. a lot of movies that I watched. I loved. I know what I did last summer when I was when it came out. I do not anymore. Well, and I'll even tell you, like she's all that. Like I well, love she's all that back in the. But I've watched it recently, and I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. Like. <laughs> You know, but this well, movie yes. is just, it, uh, I don't know. It actually grew with you. Yeah. Or those other ones you left in the past. Yeah. I get it. I mean, okay, but I didn't leave them in the past. So that's <laughs> fine. But, because I mean. Look, you can like, she's all that. It's fine. Well. I'm just saying for to, me. In, in like, you know, in your defense here. Like, I, there are some that I feel that way about. There are some though, like. Because, I mean, 10 Things I Hate About You. Obviously, Clueless. Like, I mean, those are movies that, like, still stay with us. They do. But there are several that were not that great. But I did love them. At the time. At the time. Yeah. So. Well, I think this is, like, in the realm of Clueless. Where the older you get, like, you can still watch it. And you're like, there's literally nothing wrong with this movie. Like, it's a perfect movie, right? Yeah. But I feel like you never hear people talk about Jawbreaker. You don't. It's an underrated. Like, his. Yeah, yeah, it's like an underrated gem. This movie? Yeah. I think it's very much got a, a cult following. Like that's, I think so too. It definitely it does. does. And I think, and the reason why I think it's relevant to like talk about it on a horror podcast is there's a lot of, you know, like the Carrie references. Like, and I feel like a lot of horror movie fans really like Jawbreaker. Oh, they it's do. It's kind of like. Um, you have the horror royalty and. Yeah. Yes. You have a lot of screen queens in it. I mean, you think, you know, Julie Benz was in. 
Buffy. She was in one of the Saw movies. She was in Dexter. Dexter. Obviously, yep. Rose McGowan was in Scream. Devil in the Flesh. Uh, Phantoms. Phantoms. Gayheart. And then you've got Rebecca, who was urban literally legend. one of our first female serial killers in Urban Legend. Mm-hmm. Which y- y'all Judy Greer is in that. Halloween. Yeah, uh, Halloween Kills. Carol Kane was in When a Stranger Calls. Like you have <laughs> yeah. all these horror. Like I don't know. So I feel like it's very much like uh, it's horror adjacent. Like people think of yes. it comes up to them. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm just so excited. We've got our first Nashville hot of the season. Unanimous. Yeah. The unanimous that's crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I like. When did the, went into this knowing that was pretty much what was going to happen? I was going to give this a five because I fucking I knew too. But I thought if somebody gives this move a four, <laughs> they are you were going to be pissed. I was going to be pissed. We met. We met Rebecca Earhart back in January. We did. You didn't yeah. get a Jawbreaker poster though, did you? From her? No, I had her sign a photo of Brenda. You had Scream Two and Urban yes, Legend. She signed my Scream Two poster because, of course, who doesn't love Sister Lois and Sister Murphy? Mm-hmm. Um. But oh my god, y'all! She's so legend. nice, and we'll post pictures. I'll post some pictures whenever, um, whenever the time comes. But I stitched her a little jewelry, oh. and she, what did she say? Michael? She's like Darren Stein would love this. Yes, well, and he had. Cause well, he you showed my, the pictures. Yes, yeah, I had an original, um, a picture of the original pattern that I showed her with all. And he's on. he's like he's already seen it and liked the the post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, but she said she would cherish it forever she was she so was so nice. sweet well so nice. how julie of her so, right literally <laughs> that is so julie of her i don't know if you know this but when i went up there i was ahead of keith this is a stupid story but i got a jawbreaker and an urban legend poster sign or eight by ten sign and i handed her the jawbreaker when i said will you write eat shit to michael eat shit love rebecca gayhart and she wrote of course and then she wrote to Michael, have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Gayhart. I'm like, okay, whatever. But to be fair, I feel like we were talking to her. So she's probably a little distracted, right? She was so sweet. Well, and So sweet. And this was her first I was going to say it was her first con. Right. I was very excited to meet her. I stood in the rain and shivered. We sure did. Because y'all like, okay. I'm sure people listening to this knows how the conventions work, but she was only supposed to be there on Saturday and Sunday. We'd only planned to go on Friday, so we got a Saturday ticket just to meet just her, just so we could meet her. And our flight was literally leaving at like God, one o'clock, one o'clock or noon. Like it was early, so we knew that if we didn't get in there and meet her, we wouldn't get to. And so we stood in line outside before they opened the doors. And we were like one of the first ones in line. I'd say we, we were probably fifth or sixth in line. But yeah. damn it, I'm glad we did because y'all, we turned around. And that line was, was full. Ridiculous. And so I'm hoping that's like motivation. Like maybe she'll do she'll some do more. Cons. Um, but people were really happy that she was there because again, she doesn't do that. And Rose did was there as well. And she her line was huge. Her line was really long. Um, well, didn't all three of them just do that '90s? They, con? they yeah, did. I would have loved, and I loved that. to have been in that photo op. I've that, Julie Benz. I've not met, and the first heart, uh, Monster Mania we went to, she was there, and I wanted to meet her, and I just didn't get a chance. Her, her line, line was, was pretty. Long. Her line was pretty long the whole time. Yeah, and she is god damn beautiful. She is not beautiful. Yeah, just. I mean, all of them are beautiful. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about her in person, though. Yes, yeah, she looks about like Julie. Be, well, even about Julie ben, yeah. even when you like see the photo ops that she takes with <clears> people, <throat> like she makes it a point to like touch them, like even yeah. if they're not maybe in a pose or that you you know you might put your arm around them, she's gonna touch you. Yeah. Which, well, I had a friend of mine that went to a Buffy convention back when it was on TV, and she obviously she was there, and one of the security guards, like Julie, was just walking through the the hotel or whatever Mm -hmm. where it was at and my friend like saw her but wasn't gonna like lash out right but say anything she did like just kind of like smile and like wave or something and julie came over and was like gonna talk to her and the security tried to pull my friend away and julie was like um no No. like i love that she did that i was like gonna come up and like say hi to her because like it was just her. It wasn't like a yeah. group. It's of not people. like some stalker or some yeah. crazy person. Yeah. So, oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely on my list. Of now, if Judy Greer would do a, oh a my fucking God. con. Well, I'm, this was like her first movie, wasn't it? 
Um, what's and I would say I Judy know. probably is the biggest. I would say she's definitely person had from this career. now. Yeah, because yeah. she's been in a bunch of pretty big movies. I mean, even if you take Halloween out of it, like she's been in a lot. Yeah, of stuff. she's been in a lot of stuff. She's kind of in everything. When I saw Literally. this, I never would have thought be, that yeah. though. Well, I thought no. Rose would have been. Well, I think Rose did too. I think they all had. A she really just kind of checked out, yeah. But yeah, to your point, like Rose kind of was like over it, and I almost feel like Rebecca, like she's very much like a mom, like she she has, had a bunch of kids, you yeah. know. Um. So, anywho, but yeah, that's um, off topic. Great I'm cast. Sorry. I would love to meet. <laughs> I would love to meet Judy Greer, and they're going to do uh, Halloween forty five in, in California. People are saying like maybe some of these people will show up. I would Kyle love Richards. Kyle Richards. I'm telling you, I would go to that just to meet Kyle and Judy Greer, like a hundred. I'd love to meet Judy. I've loved her from. This movie on. Okay. You know what movie I really love her in, though? The one with Jennifer Lopez? Yes. <laughs> yes. The Wedding the Planner? Wedding planner? <laughs> Little known fact. <laughs> the Wedding Planner is one of my biggest, guiltiest pleasures. I love it so much. And I love Judy Greer in it. And I love the part when they're in the park and it's the three of them. And she's setting it up because she's like wanting them to go on a date. This is before we know that he's marrying Bridget Wilson's character whose name is Fran, um, Francine. <laughs> and Judy gets her um, her candy. What is she eating? What does he get her? M&M's? I haven't watched The Wedding Planner. Or so. something, but he gets her, like it's, you remember those machines you'd go to, you put a quarter yeah. on it and you'd get the yeah. candy? Well, she, he gives it to her. Oh, it's a gumball. It's a gumball. And she says, oh, you never get the color that you want. And she puts it in her mouth and it's kind of awkward. She's like, oh, shoot. I just remembered that my ex-godmother's friend, son's cousin or something. <laughs> I don't remember what she says. Needs help with their fax cartridge tonight. <laughs> because they're going out of town on an African safari. So I guess I better go do that. <laughs> and then leaves them that I just... I love that movie. It's so stupid and good. Oh, she really oh. is in everything. Cause wasn't she even in she's Suddenly in everything. 30? Yeah, she yes. was. Well, and she's in some commercials right now, too, for... Um, my God, I don't even know what it is, but I've seen them. She, where she's like a... It's almost like she's a marriage counselor, and they're talking oh, about the internet or something. I can't remember what... Have you read it? Oh, that, that does sound familiar. No. Is it good? Have you read it? Yeah. Yeah, her like book. Time yeah, I read her book too. Oh, you it's did? good. Yeah, I read it when it came out. Oh wow! I mean, That's I loved her in Cursed. What she's in, which is funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! You I don't, forgot about Cursed. What is it? The, you don't know? I don't know what you know me from. Yeah. 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 That's what it's called. It's like you very true. Apropos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and rate the Hard Fried Podcast and catch up on all our previous episodes on your favorite streaming service. Links are available on our Instagram page. Once again, we'd like to thank our friend Dr. Gang Green for hosting Hard Fried Theater this season. Y'all can find him on Instagram, YouTube, and at his website, drgangreen.com. Now it's time to swap spit and hit the road. Before we go, we want to say a special thank you to Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Thank Michelle. you, guys. It was fun. Thank you. Come back any. You're not, you know you're welcome anytime. Well, um, she wants a, a what? Oh, she wants hotties to a, too or, or something. Horror, we need horror to do hunks. it. We need to do a horror hunks television edition. Television horror. We do need to do that. What is that it going to be? be? So, that would be so easy to supernatural work. and true blood, and that's oh, it. Vampire Diaries and what? Vampire Diaries. Vampire Diaries. You yeah. watch your mouth. I think they like <laughs> yeah, Walking <laughs> Dead, Dexter. Hello. Have you ever watched Dexter? Bucky. No, but I know. It's <laughs> I was about to say. I don't think he has. <laughs> it's a American Horror Story slasher. Look, we've oh got please, a lot of your whole list would be True Blood, and that's it. That is not true. <laughs> it's My totally one true. Would definitely not be from True okay. Blood. Okay. Well. Okay. So, so look, surprises. Wait, now we now we need to do it. Yeah, See, now, so we, now, we now we have to do it, it so we can get to the bottom of it. Um, Michelle, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, on Instagram at Aussie Heller Witch. And do not make me spell it out again like you did last time. <laughs> okay, well, fine, Miss Sassy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Link it in the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> if you look, we're going to tag her in everything. So you'll be able to find her pretty easily. But join us next time as we really dive back into the horror aspect of this season with 2003's High Tension. 
Very excited about that. Now it's time to swap spit and hit the road. Until next time, remember, learn it, live it, love it. Bye. <laughs> Bye. She's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a wrap on episode 10 of The Jawbreaker. This is high school, Detective Cruz. What is a friend, anyway? <laughs>